as mentioned, I'm Hui Jin from Arizona State University, um, Cefcom Labs. And I'm here to talk to you about um, our greenhouse. Um, the title is a bit, of, a bit of a mouthful, but hopefully as I explain things in this presentation, uh, the concept behind our prototype, uh, how greenhouse works and what it does, uh, it will start making a bit more sense. So to start us off, uh, the problem we're trying to sort of address in our research here is one of IoT devices, uh, namely that IoT devices tend to come with bugs. Uh, there are a lot of IoT devices out there in the world, about 15 million IoT devices connected to the web as of 2023, and with the large number of IoT devices comes a large number of potential bugs. Uh, so as security researchers, we want to be able to analyze and find bugs on these large array of devices without having to throw huge amounts of money at buying each and every variation and model of a given device. We also want to be able to apply um, well-established static and dynamic analysis tools to these devices to find bugs in a scalable manner. One way to achieve this is through rehosting, where we take the firmware images running on a device and uh, rehost them inside a virtualized environment. Uh, the idea here being if we can get the firmware services and processes we want to analyze running in a more controlled, more generalizable environment, it'll make it easier for us to apply various tools and techniques uh, to find bugs in this virtual emulation that correspond to bugs on the actual device. Uh, simple as this sounds, uh, in practice there are a few complications. Uh, usually when we're trying to rehost uh, a firmware image, we are targeting certain services, usually web services, that provide vectors for us to uh, remotely interact with a given firmware image. Um, these web services tend to depend on a wide array of um, you know, scripts, library, libraries, peripherals, kernel modules, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, and in order to get a firmware service uh, rehosted, we must first emulate each of these uh, supporting components such that the service behaves in a manner similar to that on its original device. Um, as such, um, usually what one would do is make use of a full system emulation using a general purpose uh, OS level emulator like Humo system. Uh, these, um, emulate, these emulators tend to come with many of the components you need to emulate uh, to rehost a firmware image already uh, built into the emulation itself. This means that uh, a lot of prior existing works uh, tend to default to using Humo system, to using full system emulation, uh, because it allows them to then focus their research on extending these existing components uh, to support the, the, the findings uh, they are looking for. Um, the issue though is that when using full system emulation, uh, these emulations tend to come with uh, some drawbacks, notably a uh, high overhead uh, and a rigid execution environment. Uh, what we mean by this is that, well, uh, in our experience, we once encountered a firmware where it kind of closed all outgoing connections, uh, except with web service, which meant that we had uh, no TTY, no SSH, we had no real way of uh, talking to the firmware, which meant that the whole environment inside the full system emulation became something of a black box. Uh, this meant it was really time consuming and made it difficult to interact, and let alone debug and analyze the firmware image uh, inside the environment. We also once encountered a firmware image that uh, was refusing to run because it was trying to load like a specific kernel module. Uh, we had to figure out where this kernel module was, what it did, uh, and that involved untangling a complex web of dependencies that was, again, very time consuming and effortful due to the rigid execution environment. So existing works uh, in uh, firmware emulation um, have um, noticed this problem and come up with a variety of automated solutions uh, using models, stubs, wrappers, etc., to sort of substitute all these um, components in the environment with more generalized um, approaches. Uh, these uh, approaches um, inherently sort of recognize that you don't need a perfectly accurate emulation environment to get a successful rehost. Uh, this led us to sort of think, right, what if we took this concept a bit further? What if we took this idea of sacrificing um, some of the emulation accuracy uh, for better rehosting and you know, went a bit further with that? Um, and so an example where we had the kernel module where it was trying to load, instead of trying to generate and create support for the kernel module inside the, the emulation environment, what if instead we looked at the part that did the, the loading of the kernel module and just told it to, well, ignore it, skip it. Um, continue on as though the kernel module had been loaded correctly, um, and then we carry on with the rehost. Uh, 
And um, in practice, we found that this actually worked quite well for the sample. We were able to not only rehost the web services that we wanted to analyze, but also um, find bugs in these services. Um, Nucleides bugs had nothing to do with the kernel module that it was trying to load. Um, this sort of phenomenon uh, is not limited to this one sample. Uh, in September 2022, uh, Tenda released uh, 10 CVEs uh, of buffer overflows in its web face in its network functions of uh, the HTTP binary. Uh, these network functions um, again had nothing to do with many of the peripherals running on the device. But the HTTP binary still requires a number of these peripherals to be running correctly before you're able to execute and reach code where these buffer overflows are present. This made us think, you know, um, we don't actually need many of the things inside the emulation environment instead of trying to recreate as many components as possible. What if we only uh, emulated some components in the emulation environment? And instead of using uh, full system emulation, uh, what if we used user space emulation? Uh, this will give us a more lightweight, a more flexible emulation environment, one that we can then uh, use to analyze firmware web services uh, in a quick manner. And this, again, this whole idea of uh, sacrificing the overall emulation accuracy uh, in order to enable better rehosting uh, is the sort of underlying concept behind our prototype, Greenhouse. So Greenhouse uh, takes an iterative approach to rehosting, where after extracting a firmware image, we place it inside a runner that emulates and runs the firmware image. Uh, it, this generates traces that are passed to a checker. The checker uses these traces to find issues that might be impeding the rehosting of a given firmware service that we turn roadblocks. Uh, the fixer, which takes in and takes these uh, roadblocks and then applies corresponding interventions to the binaries and emulation environment, passes it back to the runner, and then the whole thing repeats over and over again, thereby driving the firmware services of interest through uh, what we term the four stages of rehosting, here defined as being able to unpack the firmware image, being able to execute the firmware services of interest, being able to connect to these firmware web services, and lastly, being able to interact with these firmware web services. Um, to sort of illustrate what I'm talking about here, we can look at this uh, ASUS firmware example, the WL500. So here we are able to unpack and, and execute the, the firmware image already, and from the traces we have gathered, which is a mix of things like SDL, strace, etc., etc., uh, the checker finds that it's, it's able to run but can't bind to a specific address. It needs a unique network device. Uh, the checker passes these roadblocks to the fixer, which proposes the well, fix of creating a dummy network device with that hard-coded address. Uh, these interventions are applied through a run script and then passed back to the runner. And you know, after executing again, now we're able to bind and we even can connect to the firmware image uh, and web services. But the curl message that we use to connect uh, returns an empty HTML page. There's no content at all. Uh, once again, looking at the roadblocks that the checker identifies, it finds that there are missing frame configuration values, uh, a number of missing folders, most notably some missing content files in the ASP and HTML files in the environment that have been misplaced. The fixer uh, generates these missing configuration values uh, using a set of default values that we've gathered from other similar firmwares in our data set, uh, creates missing folders, and uh, copies over the HTML and ASP content pages uh, to where the emulation expects them to be. Uh, it applies these interventions and again goes through the runner and the whole process repeats over and over. And eventually we get a well-formed web page that we can interact with, log into, and utilize for analysis. In some cases though, uh, we are not able to rehost the firmware image simply through environmental inventions alone. In that case, like this tender example, uh, it's trying to connect to some backend process or server with a socket that does not exist. Uh, interventions have failed. So uh, Greenhouse makes use of anger to create a CFG of the binaries associated with a given web service. It then maps the execution trace of the binary to this CFG and uses the mapping to identify branch points that lead to exits. Uh, these tend to correspond to checks uh, arbitrary checks, such as the so aforementioned socket uh, connection thing, and it just patches these checks so that we just skip past it as though we had fulfilled the requirements. Uh, doing so mean, allows us to bypass many of these environmental checks without actually uh, meeting or actually um, knowing what they <laughs> require. Uh, so as you can see, even though we still can't connect to the socket in question, we were able to drive the execution of the web service past that point uh, so that it connects and is listening for requests at a specific address. We can then fall back to the previous uh, iterative approach of applying roadblocks interventions again until eventually we get a well-formed web page. Uh, 
uh, for sort of a full list of our roadblocks interventions, as well as a discussion of a binary patcher, uh, please refer to our paper. So uh, we evaluated greenhouse on a sample set of about over 7,000 firmware images gathered from uh, Wet set 9 well-known manufacturers. Uh, greenhouse was able to automatically re-host over 2,800 HTTP firmware services uh, to have sufficient fidelity for use with dynamic analysis tools such as Rotosploit and AFL++. Uh, we were able to use Rotosploit to replay over 700 web-based NDA attacks and discovered more than 18,000 crashes on 733 binaries of AFL++. Uh, we took a small subset of these crashes and uh, manually triaged them and were able to confirm that 26 of them were real zero-day vulnerabilities. Greenhouse is not limited to HTTP web services. We also evaluated on UPnP and DNS web services and were able to re-host over 1,800 UPnP web services and over 1,600 DNS web services. Uh, we also compared Greenhouse against the current state-of-the-art large-scale uh, full-system re-hosting solution from AE. Greenhouse was able to rehost 39.8% of our data set, while from AE was able to rehost about 33.7% of our data set, uh, showing that our user space iterative approach to rehosting is comparable to existing full system rehosting approaches. In fact, we found that Greenhouse is able to rehost 1,500 firmware images that firmware could not, while from AE was able to rehost 1,100 uh, firmware images services that Greenhouse could not. Uh, this suggests that our approaches uh, between the user space emulation and full system emulation may actually be complementary with each other. And if we were to total up the firmware services that were rehosted by both platforms, we almost hit four, more than almost 4,000 uh, rehosted firmware services. So to sort of summarize, uh, Greenhouse, um, we, we took some existing ideas of um, sacrificing emulation accuracy to achieve better rehosting. And where did it lead us? Uh, it led us to being able to rehost more than 2,800 uh, firmware services in user space. It led to nearly 4,000 combined rehosted firmware services when used with existing state-of-the-art full system techniques. And it led to 26 reworld zero days. Uh, if you're interested in trying out Greenhouse, uh, our source code and instructions for using our tool can be found on our GitHub webpage. Uh, thank you for your time.